welcome for Abnormal Psychology Part 1. We're going to talk about the basics of what a disorder or psychological disorder is today. So starting off with what is the definition of a psychological disorder? A psychological disorder requires three things to be present. It has to be a behavior that is deviant or deviate, distressful, and dis oops this functional so these three things have to be there it has to be deviate so deviate means it has to deviate from the social norms of your society so um, a psychological disorder might not might be something in one society but not another so depending on how what, how you're supposed to act in that particular culture society may or may not classify you as a psychological disorder it has to be distressful to you that means um, it can't be something, if, if, you're, if you're not having a problem with it, then it's not a disorder. Okay, so it has to be distressful to you, right? There's such things as just being weird, right? We're all weird. And so a psychological disorder is not being weird. It has to cause you personal distress. So that's a key for a psychological disorder. So again, first it has to be deviate, then it has to be distressful to you, and it has to be dysfunctional. And it has to occur with either your thoughts, your feelings, or your behaviors. So if it occurs with this, this, or this. So if your thoughts are deviate, distressful, dysfunctional, check psychological disorder. If your feelings, deviate, distressful, dysfunctional, psychological. If one, so you have to have all three of these things present here in order for you to have a psychological Disorder, all right. So oh, once again, deviate is, is a key, right? This doesn't it means it can vary from culture to culture. Distressful. What might be distressful for one person might not be distressful for another. So this can change. I mean, psychological disorder can vary from person to person, and then it has to be dysfunctional. It has to uh, stop you or hinder you from operating in normal life. Okay. If it doesn't hinder you and doesn't stop you from doing things, then it's not a disorder. Okay. So these three things have to be present, which is kind of a key here um, so that a psychological disorder for one person may not be a psychological disorder for another okay so moving on to a particular type of psychological disorder um, one that we're all very um, probably heard about at least is ADHD attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and this occurs uh, if it appears by the age of seven okay and you have to have one of these three symptoms okay you have to have extreme inattention. You can have hyperactivity or impulsivity. All right, so you just have to have one of these three things, and you can be classified as ADHD, which is, uh, you know, uh, critics of diagnosing a lot of people with ADHD is that it's being overdiagnosed, right? So this this one right here, hyperactivity, right? So uh, boys are disproportionately diagnosed with ADHD than girls, and uh, critics of this would say that, well, boys are disproportionately more hyper than girls are, and any parent can tell you that, right? This may or may not, might not be true, but this is what critics might say. And this hyperactivity just means that the boys need to play more. They need to go out and spend some of that energy, and if you allow them to use that energy in some specific way they wouldn't be hyperactive anymore and they wouldn't be labeled as ADHD and they would have to take this medication that's being prescribed to them and so ADHD is kind of a um, it's a bit of a controversy for uh, for certain people because of uh, you only have to have one of these three things and right you can pretty much classify any seven-year-old uh, with one of these things inattention hyperactivity impulsivity you know what is what is hyperactivity and so that's kind of a, a gray area with uh, ADHD here. Um, one thing about psychological disorders that's kind of interesting is that 26% of adults in any one given year can be classified with a psychological disorder. So one in every four adults, so one in four, right, every year can will have a psychological disorder at one time or another. And then for 46% over the course of their life. So one in every two people over the course of their life practically is going to have, could be classified with some sort of psychological disorder. So it's kind of interesting in that.
Um, okay, so how do we uh, do these or classify these psychological disorders? Well, you know, throughout history, there's different ways of classifying these things, you know, with evil spirits, you know, back in the day, older, old times, you know, sometimes they might even drill a hole in your head to let out the evil spirits or what have you. But uh, the more current view is to use the medical model, right? So the medical model says that uh, psychological disorder is a disease, right? We classify it as a disease, right? That can have physical causes that can be, okay, here's the key, and they can be diagnosed, they can be treated, and they can often be cured. All right, so key here, disease, and then they can be diagnosed, treated, and often cured. So we uh, look at psychological disorders in this way. We say that they're a disease, that we can diagnose them, that we can treat them, and that we can oftentimes cure them, right? And that's how we approach all diseases, right? When you, Whether you have uh, something wrong with your heart, whether you have something wrong with a different part of your body, right? We can diagnose it, treat it, and we can oftentimes cure it. Um, how do we diagnose it? Well, there's this thing called the DSM. So we're currently on the DSM-5, uh, which came out in 2013, um, so just last year. 2013, it stands for the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. It's kind of like the Bible of uh, psychology. This is what doctors, this is what psychologists, psychiatrists use to diagnose different uh, disorders, right? It's kind of, and so it's kind of like a checklist, and so it will describe, you know, um, a, a particular disorder will have, you know, does it have this? Does it have this? This is, or these are the, you know, seven things that may be um, apparent apparent in this particular disorder. And if you can check off three of them, then you can say that this person has this disorder, right? And so, what's important about the DSM, right, is that it's used by everybody. But it's also what's important is that it's used by insurance companies, right? So insurance companies won't pay you or won't pay for the person's treatment unless the DSM says that they have these things. And so this is important. So any changes to the DSM, insurance companies have a lot of uh, influence. Maybe not influence is not the right word, but they have a lot of uh, interest in what happens because how much they pay could be changing. Now, if something's easier to diagnose, that means that the insurance may be just forking out more money to help support it. Um, so that's the DSM. And it's important to note. So the DSM uses, last part of this uh, lecture here, uses uh, five axes. So when somebody's diagnosing a disorder, they use the, they look through these five axes. They ask themselves, kind of go through this checklist, and they ask themselves these questions. Look, some, look at things through this particular uh, lens. Is a clinical syndrome present? So a clinical syndrome is, is there, you know, is it stress related? Is it a somatoform? disorder, you know, is it distressful, etc. So is, are, are all the, any of these different types of syndromes present, right? Um, then they ask, you know, look for the second axis, is a personality disorder or mental retardation present? Um, sometimes you can say yes to this, sometimes you can say no, right? So we don't know. Um, so is, is, are one of these two things present, right? So, right, because this, right, Mental retardation, if there's mental retardation, and what we said earlier, it has to be distressful to the person. Something for somebody who has a lower IQ, that might not be distressful for them, whereas it might be distressful for somebody with a higher IQ. So for the person with a mental retardation, it may not be a mental disorder because that person may not have the, uh, it might not be distressful for them, so we can't classify it as a disorder. The third axis that's looked at is, is there a general medical condition? So is there something that's not psychological that's also going on? So like diabetes, hypertension, arthritis, or any of these types of things present. The fourth axis, are there any psychosocial or environmental problems, such as school or housing issues present? So right, is the environment playing a role in this? Um, how can that help or hinder this problem? And then finally, what is the global assessment of the personal functioning? All right, so how can this, per how well is this person functioning? And that's a scale of one to a hundred. Um, and one last final, this little tidbit about um, psychology, psychological disorders is that it's kind of changed in the last fifty to sixty years. Right, in the nineteen fifties, there were only sixty classifiable types of disorder categories of disorder. There was only sixty in the nineteen fifties. 
Um, today, there are over 400. And it's easier to get uh, classified, easier to get diagnosis something today. And so, you know, critics will say, we're, we can basically, anybody's behavior, you can classify it as a psychological disorder um, because they're so broad, there's so much to talk about. So, you know, this is a bit of a controversy in the field um, about how things are diagnosed. And um, there you go. So that's it for part one. We'll do part two soon. Thanks.